Hi, this is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share with you a mysterious case of Ugg syndrome. This is a 60-something-year-old Caucasian gentleman who had cataract surgery outside the country. He uh, would come in intermittently with significantly high pressures into the 30s and 40s. There was no significant inflammation, no transillumination defects, no cratic precipitates. And I was convinced that there was an Ugg syndrome, but I, I didn't understand why because there was not any pseudophagodinesis. So I went ahead to explore him, and uh, lo and behold, I realized now that there was a second lens. Uh, he has a primary lens in the bag with an open poster capsule, but I d discover now that he has this uh, second lens in the ciliary sulcus, as you can see as I'm moving it around, and it, it's very loose uh, within the ciliary sulcus. And uh, the reason it's loose is because as I uh, tease it out, I realize it's a single piece acrylic lens. And uh, as uh, we know, a single piece acrylic lenses are known to cause Ugg syndrome in the ciliary sulcus. And so I went ahead with using these uh, MST uh, IOL uh, forceps and uh, scissors. I'm gently trying to uh, bisect this lens. Um, It can be a little challenging as you try to cut these lenses. You have to make sure that you hold that forcep in good position to allow that uh, scissor to extend. Um, and so as you can see, the scalloped edges of this haptic are, are unusual and ones that I haven't seen before. And uh, as I remove this, the second piece of this lens, I try to tease out the haptic out of the ciliary sulcus. And then as I uh, do that, I discover that the haptic was amputated uh, or cut, um, which presumably happened during the primary procedure. I remove the haptic first and then remove the optic. <clears throat> I put iris hooks in to help visualize better what's going on and to help me plan for my plan of attack. I use an axis marker to help mark the horizontal meridian with two marks, 180 degrees apart from one another and then I begin my pyridomy nasally and temporally initially I had marks uh, superiorly and inferiorly but then I reconsidered uh, my approach and uh, decided to make my uh, pyridomies uh, nasal and, and temporal and so it's important to kind of have a better idea of your plan of attack before you proceed uh, and I figured I'm going to explant this uh, lens um, through a superior incision uh, and do my intrasquelb haptic, haptic fixation um, along the horizontal meridian. I use a caliper to mark where um, three millimeters posterior chalimbus is. And then I want to make sure that uh, I make my, uh, my scleral tunnel posterior to that because as I make my flap I want to make sure that my sclerotomy is actually uh, within the flap uh, area. And you, when you make your groove, the vertical groove, you want to make sure you're deep enough uh, and you want to see a little bit of gray color and then you want to uh, go ahead and move horizontally and advance your tunnel very gently. And by doing it this way you can make sure that the flap is deep enough because a shallow flap is not a good flap. And then I use my Venice scissors to cut the edge of the flap. And then I do the same thing on the nasal uh, side and uh, create my scleral tunnel. It's a little bit of a challenging angle from here because of the uh, nose is in the way, but I'm able to eventually uh, get that flap and I felt pretty good about the depth of the flap and you want to go a little bit into the clear cornea so that when you cut the edges of the flap that it's going to be a, a flap that you can uh, lift fairly easily so like I said this gentleman had intermittent high pressures he couldn't understand why um, he moved to the United States uh, back and uh, and he had significant field loss, um, which I noticed um, after working him up after these intermittent pressure spikes. 
I went ahead and used a caliper to find my uh, three millimeter suture of the limbus, and then I used my MVR blade to make my uh, stab incisions into the sclerotomy. Again, about two and a half to three millimeters suture to the limbus. I believe that's a 21 or 23 gauge MVR blade. I, I use a three millimeter diamond blade through the superior uh, incision. And then through a piercing to the side, I'm using um, a viscoelastic cannula to try to get around the optic of the lens and try to uh, prolapse that optic anteriorly. So I'm able to uh, grab the edge of it like I am here with the intraocular forcep. And then I'm going to bisect it with the intraocular scissor. You can see how the hooks are really helpful to with my visualization. So again, proper planning with these types of procedures is important uh, to help uh, just facilitate the procedure. And then I'll go ahead and use two forceps, um, a second forcep through the main incision to remove. Once you uh, use a forcep to grab a lens, it creates significant uh, indentation marks and the serrated edge of the edges of the uh, forcep uh, create these uh, same ridges into the lens material so it becomes very sticky and so using a second forcep is pretty helpful to help uh, release uh, the lens from the forcep. In this case I prolapsed the haptic out of the eye first because it's facing me rather than trying to rotate the whole thing I pulled the haptic out first and then grabbed the optic to pull it out. I use this uh, 23 gauge Lewicki AC maintainer. It's important to have a very tight fit and uh, because of the uh, striations of the uh, maintainer it stays in stable. I'm sorry I edited out the removal of the capsular bag and the, um, the lens remnants but I did a thorough uh, parse plane of vitrectomy to remove all of that material through my sclerotomy. I have a forcep through the sclerotomy and the lens uh, shooter is in the main incision superiorly. My uh, technician is advancing the lens and I grab the tip of the leading haptic and as she's advancing the lens very slowly I'm ensuring that the lens is in proper position and it won't uh, tilt or twist and rotate out. I pull the haptic out of the sclerotomy incision. Here this is quite tricky and, and I've learned with, with time that you have to make sure that trailing haptic is in proper position otherwise the lens is going to start rotating and tilting in a funny way. My assistant is holding the leading haptic out of the sclerotomy with a McPherson forcep. Now I'm using a handshake technique to hold that trailing haptic and the reason you do this is because it's difficult to uh, ha hand off the uh, haptic through the main incision because it's too close to the sclerotomy. So you want to uh, grab it through the main incision and then handshake it through a paracentesis which is further away and then you can go through the sclerotomy and then receive that haptic and then pull the haptic out through the sclerotomy. I'm holding that right one in the proper position and I'm going to have my technician to kind of pull that haptic down and as I, res uh, as I took the haptic from her I'm laying it in proper position. Now that it's in proper position you don't have to hold it. I learned this from uh, Yuri McKee. Uh, instead of using a hyperdermic needle, I used a uh, half millimeter uh, uh, diamond blade to make my scleral tunnel. Hyperdermic needle uh, tunnels are very small and tight, and I found it uh, very frustrating to try to pass the haptic through the tunnel. There was significant resistance, and it's just a waste of time, very frustrating. Whereas using this uh, diamond blade approach, it just slides through the scleral tissue very nicely and uh, deeply also and you're able to feed that haptic through the sclerotomy very easily. And so um, once you have the scleral uh, tunnels um, holding the haptics you can dry off with a wet cell first and then apply the sealant and the fibrin I like to separate the uh, sealant and fibrin uh, into separate um, TB syringes. I feel this gives me uh, more control as I can apply them separately and drop by drop. And then I'm going uh, to close the conjunctiva uh, using the forceps and the glue.
do the same procedure on the other side and close the conjunctiva with the glue. And then you'll see I'll eventually remove the, the iris hooks and the AC maintainer. This patient afterward was a ch uh, did not uh, lose any vision uh, by doing the exchange and his pressures ended up uh, being stable um, off his glaucoma medications. Uh, I placed a tenonalon suture through the uh, superior um, main incision and I'm applying mycol into the anterior chamber to constrict the pupil to ensure there's no vitreous. Um, and so again, I was uh, pretty perplexed about the UGG syndrome. It's important to consider that you might have a situation like this. Um, this patient did say that the primary surgeon has some complications, and so that could have been a sign. So this is my approach to intrascleral haptic fixation. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for your attention.